So they had um, a meeting, a Carlsberg moment, I think that was called, and basically after some consideration, what she's going to tell you about today is one way that Birmingham have decided that they would like to deal with this matter, and I think we'd all benefit from finding out what they're doing here. So I'll pass swiftly over to Claire. Right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, right. First of all, I hope you can all read. <laughs> okay, so this question, this is a question that uh, Simon Crawford, the, the Master of the St. Martin's Guild, asked uh, a broad cross-section of guild members at a sort of focus group meeting. It was actually called the Carl's Day, but it was held in uh, April 2013. We, uh, as a result of that, we did a bit of a skills audit within the uh, within the guild just to see what we thought what we thought we knew about the guild. We discovered a few interesting things, uh, like we actually didn't really know where most of our members were. We didn't really know the training capabilities of our members. Um, we we could react to help uh, requests from help from, from people, but only if they made the request. To us. Uh, we were quite concerned about the, the uh, standard of training in the guild, and this became uh, obvious, more obvious to us because Simon started organising some adult learners' events, which were sort of social occasions. But we were discovering that there were a lot of people out there who were really struggling. They were struggling to learn the basics, sometimes because they didn't have enough experience really as a round of them to progress. But also sometimes because there were some serious bell handling issues which were preventing them from uh, doing even basic, you know, basic things, getting them right. So it was, uh, that was what was preventing them from, uh, from progressing. And on the other end of the scale, as Pip briefly alluded to, we did have some practices that were suffering from too many people coming to them because, and wanting to progress because they knew that was the practice that people were learning. When you, if you, uh, you know, when you get a practice like 35 people there, it becomes very difficult to manage, especially if 25 of them want to read my dog. So we, we did take a look at what we already did. I mean, we weren't doing no training whatsoever. Uh, we, uh, and we analysed what we were doing just so that we could see what, what we could do more. And we had, uh, as with most guilds and associations, we had an annual guild training day. Well, sometimes uh, this would be a mixed uh, ability event with everybody uh, together on the day. Sometimes we'd put them into smaller groups to focus on specific skills. Things like 10 bell practices day were focused events uh, targeting particular guild members, uh, usually as a result of a request or somebody moaning. Uh, local events for local ringers. We had, uh, these were organised by local towers for their own ringers, but sometimes they put out a call for help or an experienced ringer to come and say, do some conducting or something like that, just, just to bring band members on. As briefly alluded to, the adult learners events, these are, these are sort of a couple of times a year we organise this specifically for older learners. It's supposed to be social as well as educational. We take them out and to have a couple of towers in the morning, pub lunch, a couple of towers in the, in the afternoon. We were at, at the time before April 2013, um, Andy Carr, who lives here, he was organising some Saturday morning practices here, uh, which were attracting a lot of people, attracting a lot of um, uh, learners, hoping to progress, but also attracting a, a, a good number of experienced ringers who were coming and enjoying the, uh, the occasion. And for the last four years or so, we've had a monthly youth practice. So that's what we've been doing already. So, the idea that was come up with, um, as a, uh, well, partly as a result of the Charlesburg thing, was the Birmingham School of Bell Ring. And uh, briefly, uh, this is how it works. 
the student uh, well, it's a very small feature, but the student enrolls at Tower A, and this is where we teach them bell handling. Once they're proficient at bell handling, they then move to Tower B. <coughs> at Tower B, we concentrate on foundation skills, all of those kaleidoscope exercises, random pull changes, learning to move your bell uh, either and bring it quicker or slower just to put it in the right place. We actually extend the curriculum a little bit from level two here. We introduce covering to this, uh, this part of the curriculum. Uh, uh, covering to call changes and possibly moving on to uh, covering to method. But, and that, that partly depends on whether, there's whether there is the right moment to move a student forward up to level three and the, uh, the third tower. So they move to Tower C where we do plane hunting. <coughs> Learning to plane hunt on all bells from two to six. Learning to plane hunt on an inside bell. At this point they ring their first quarter bill, treble to doubles. They will uh, ring a second quarter bill as well, uh, cover into doubles before they then move on to the final tower, which is Tower D. Uh, here we introduce them to method ringing inside. Start them off with playing off doubles. The way we follow the curriculum is we actually do the doubles route for level four and then move them to the minor route for level six to five. There isn't a level six, is there? <laughs> uh, so, so we teach them, start by teaching them playing off doubles on the side, <coughs> then we move them up to playing off minor. They learn little bob uh, minor on the side and they will be able to bring <coughs> the treble to treble bob. They're going to ring four more quarter fields at this tower in order to get to the level four and the level five of the of the uh, learning rate scheme. Now we chose Saturday morning for this, mainly because it's a neutral time. It doesn't clash with anybody's practice night, uh, so people can't. Uh, what, you're not going to get people who would really like to come, but they say, "Well, I can't do it because it's my own practice night." So. So Saturday morning, we didn't think there's, well there certainly aren't any practices around here on Saturday morning, so that was a free time. And your, provided your uh, new ringer can stay free on Saturday morning, then they've got a clear pathway to progress from raw recruit right through to um, a method ringer inside. Of course, I didn't make it clear, but uh, because these, these, all, these towers all run concurrently, um, at Saturday morning, so so the move is uh, it's not like you move a night or anything like that. So every every Saturday morning, four towers will run at the same time. So what's not to like about that? Then? <coughs> and so to start with, after we decided we were going to do this, uh, we had a small focus group met just thrash out the details and work out how we were going to turn this into a reality. We needed to know where we were going to get our tutors from. Well, a, a bit of um, research around the guild, uh, around we discovered that we had <coughs> around about 15 people who had uh, uh, attended either one or both of the ITTS modules. We contacted them and just to see where, uh, uh, for expressions of willingness actually to help us with the scheme, explain the scheme, ask them if they'd be prepared to help, and we got a, a good number of those who said they were. We needed to find out where we were going to get our helpers from. Uh, we sent out emails to people, a general email to the Guild on the Guild e list, list explaining what we were going to do. Simon actually sent some in, uh, in individual emails to specific members of Target in the saying, <coughs> asking if they would help. And we got a good number of those back, so we were confident that we were going to do something at this. Then we had to get our towers, so we needed to find towers that had nice, easy ring cells. They needed to have either good sound control or a simulator or really forgiving residents. <laughs> they needed to be on public transport, uh, easy to access public transport, they needed free parking, needed to have toilets. So there were quite a few tick boxes there. And not least, they needed to have uh, 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 the local bands needed to be on board. Really. The, the, the local band needed to be, to be happy to give us access for two hours a week, every week, <coughs> and also to store our, our box. We have two big boxes. Each tower, we've got an admin box and a refreshment box. 
So, so we had to find tasks to do that. We, we also had to decide on a curriculum, but that wasn't a problem really, because we'd already decided that learning the ropes was the easiest thing for us to implement in the short space of time that we've had. Because uh, we only have short space of time, because this was May we were talking about, and Simon told us, well, you, we need to open this in September. So uh, that's all what we had to work with. So the curriculum was about sort of the last thing we wanted to be thinking about. So uh, learning the ropes was very convenient. Right, and sent out an email to the, the Guild's e-list, uh, e inviting students to enroll. We decided we were going to offer bell handling and plane hunting. Those were the two areas that we thought were the, the most need of a bit of um, help, shall we say. Within a week of sending out that email, I had 11 students enrolled for, the, uh, uh, for both, well, the, for the two groups. And we also sent out emails inviting helpers to come and, uh, to volunteer their services. And we had 27 helpers who had said they would come and help. So we then invited everybody to come and have to this drop-in session on the 7th of September, just to, so we could explain more about what we were going to do. So we looked at the resources we had and we decided, well, we can't, as we can't, um, open four towers, which is what we want to do, but we will open two towers. So on the 14th of September 2013, the first towers, two towers <coughs> opened. We opened at St Paul's and the Jury Quarter and at Yardley. With, uh, so St Paul's was the Bell and Link group. And uh, the day dawned <coughs> and we had five students enrolled at uh, St Paul's and six at Yardley. Right, well this is, for some people, this is a contentious issue, isn't it? Well, we don't, well, we don't, well, I say we don't care, but we, 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 uh, we think we're justified in charging for training. We have expenses, so we need to recover those expenses. And uh, what, we, we decided that it was reasonable to charge £5 for a session, with uh, £3 as a concessionary rate for uh, youngsters or, or people who were, should we say, unwaged. Um, and we, we base that on what people charge for things like Weight Watchers and Cubs and Scouts. That's what people expect to pay. We also provide refreshments at each tower and we make a little bit of money on that because we, we just ask people, we suggest that people make a donation of a pound for coffee and some biscuits. But we, one of the reasons we charge for training is because we, rather than rely on your new students going and getting the resources that we recommend, we make sure they have them so we give them to them. So for instance, at, at Tower A, when they, uh, when they start with Bell we, we give them a copy of our handbook which we had produced, the latest version of it. And this is, this, I always think that um, when, you, when you start to learn to ring, it actually can be a bit of a journey in the dark room. You don't know where you're actually going to end up or what, what you're going to meet on the way. So this goes some way to try to, uh, to tell learners what, what's going to happen to them. Briefly, it tells them a little bit about the school. It tells them how the school works, and then it tells them the pictures who the tutors are, who they can expect to meet. We have a little bit about the St Martin's Guild. St Martin's Guild is the umbrella organisation of uh, obviously from the school that come from the guild that, uh, that the school, that there's all guild members who run the school. Give them a little bit of bell ringing <coughs> back through to before the Reformation. Where we did that. Then we go inside the tower and we've got a little bit of the technical side of bell ringing, how that works, how bells work, why, um, why they're so heavy and that sort of thing. And then a section on learning to ring, the process that they're going to go through, what they can expect over the coming months or years or what have you as their hobby, uh, together with what achievements they're going to, uh, to get, uh, assuming they stay the course. And then another thing that I don't, we don't do very well with our learners of equity is a, a section on personal ringing records. How many times do you find you've got a, you, you've 
taking some of the arena outing and uh, then you, you tell them, well, have you been recording the towers that you've been visiting? And they haven't been. And they don't know that they're supposed to. Well, you aren't oh, necessarily supposed to. But the thing is, like to do it. So it's worth telling them first of all that they might like to do it. And so we give them the opportunity to do this. And then, the quarter peel records, so the six quarter peels they read in the school, they can record them here. At the back of it, I've got a bit about um, the integrated teaching training scheme. So this makes it actually makes it a multi-purpose handbook. It's not just for the students, well, it's mainly for the students, but we can give this to towers to show them what we do, show them what the opportunities are. And, uh, and so that's the first thing we give them. We give them the Monta Learner book, we, give, we enroll them on the Learning the Ropes scheme, and then crucially, they have to have passed level one before they get, then get the New Ringers book, the John Harrison and Catherine Lewis. New Rangers book. So that's their reward for passing the level one. So when uh, we, we also, at uh, each, each of the learning the road stages, obviously they get the certificates when we've enrolled, we pay them to them also, they can have the right certificates as and when they get them. When they move to Tower B, uh, this is the point at which we try to, input, uh, try to integrate them into their local plan. I say try, um, we, we hopefully we do integrate them into their local plan. Some of our recruits come through towers anyway, so they t turn up at their tower and they want to enter in. The tower sends them to us. When they get to reading rounds, uh, and uh, we're happy that they're going to be reasonably confident, we, send, we, we say around now is the time you, you need to be uh, starting to read your local band. And some of them do that before that anyway. It depends on the relationship that they have with the band, how they, if they've uh, come to that. But some people join without actually having a band in the first place, so we have to find them a band. And that's what we do. We find them, we try to match them with a band that will be, uh, well, uh, certainly in the Guild Tower, we're fairly confident that most Guild Towers will look after um, our, uh, our readers for us. And it's uh, uh, very helpful if there's been somebody involved in the school who's at the Tower, because that's usually in the introduction. So we, if we do uh, introduce the readers with haven't got to have a band as well. And once they've passed uh, level two, learning the ropes, we give them the Home Master Ropes Life DVD um, and a, a, a sort of garbled explanation about how to use it. <laughs> um, from Tower ta C, they're in their first quarter peel. We give them a framed uh, quarter peel memento. <coughs> Coleman's uh, Method Ringer's Companion just in time for them to start reading that so that they can then move to Tower D and they're ready to read their, they've done their homework and they're going to, they're ready to read their Um, I can give you some facts and figures and stuff like that, but I'll just have that in my But 
what I think I'd like to do, well, what I'm going to do, what I'd like you, what I think you'd like to hear is, no, I think you'd like to hear from one of our students. Um, this is Tim Sonta. Tim is one of uh, our students. He, uh, he and his wife Jenny enrolled in school last March, it was. Uh, and I thought uh, it'd be quite interesting for you to hear his perspective on what we've been doing. Sunter, uh, and I'm one of the new, I was one of the first students, but I joined the Birmingham School of Bell Ringing in March last year. And what I want to do is just to tell you about my experiences, why I joined, what I've discovered where I go there, and where I see myself progressing. And hopefully, through that, all there'll be some challenges, some thinking, because I don't think there's any one right answer to anything. But a little bit about background about myself. By profession, I am a teacher. And the first 17 years of my career was taught teaching maths across schools in the black country. So I started off at Ward's Bridge in Wensfield, Wolverhampton. I taught there from 1982, but that closed in 1987, so I had to move on. And then I moved to Smedic Hall Boys School in Smedic, and that closed in... <laughs> <laughs> you spotted a theme here. <laughs> that closed in 1992, and then I moved to... Uh, Churchfields High School in West Bromwich, and guess what? <laughs> that closed in, in the year 2000. I've also sat on the Trades and Enterprise Council for Dudley Borough, and that was abolished. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was abolished in 1998, and the Learning and Skills Council, which the Tories abolished when they won the election recently. So I'm amazed that anyone in education with anything with schooling would let me anywhere near them. <laughs> Whenever I turn up, it's like, I might as well be dressed in a Grim Reaper costume. <laughs> I have come to help you out. I've also, by the way, uh, been involved in local politics. I was elected as a councillor for Briley Hill, uh, part of Dudley Metropolitan Borough, and I was the leader of Dudley Council from 1998 to 2003, and then got involved in regeneration again in Briley Hill uh, for five years as their chief executive and done things by building health centres and the like since then. And I'm telling you that because my problem with describing today what it's like to be uh, a member of the Bell Ringing School is that I was hoping I could contrast it, but I haven't done any other way, so I don't really know what it's like learning through a tower. But having been a politician, I know I can talk about things I know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> so what? brought me into bell ringing. Well, I was actually lying on a bed in a caravan in the middle of a field in Wales, checking my Twitter account. Briley Hill looms big in my life, it's where I live, and I run the Twitter account at Briley underscore Hill. And someone tweeted and just said, I haven't heard the bells of St Michael's lately. And I thought, well, neither have I. And then someone else tweeted saying, well, that's really sad, I used to enjoy those bells of St Michael's. And so I know the local vicar, Dave uh, Hoskin, so I emailed him and said, look, on my Twitter account, this question's come up, what's happened to the bells of St. Michael, which is the church in Briley Hill? We should have said, but you probably assume that. Uh, and David said, we just can't get bell ringers. There's, there's no one who will ring the bells normally. And worse than that, even for weddings now, there's a difficulty getting bell ringing in. Well, I was in the middle of the middle of the in the car on a lovely summer holiday. But I said to Jen, my wife, Maybe that's something we ought to be involved with. And then, as ever, I did nothing about it at all for six months. But after six months, at the beginning of last year, I thought, well, maybe that's something Jen and I can do together. It'd be, be a good hobby to do. So, when I started teaching, and everyone said, what do we do? We said, how do you go and find out? And the answer be a library. How do people find out nowadays what to do? The internet, Google in particular. So I googled learning to bell ring, and that page, Claire and Simons and the Bell Ringing School's webpage. And I thought, wow, that looks really, really good. And the things that attracted me to that was, one, you can learn from scratch. Two, and this was the most attractive thing for me, and I read it three times to make sure, it said, you don't have to be fit. <laughs> 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 well, 
do not say what, but he did say you have to go climb stairs. So I thought that was really good, and talking about price earlier, the price was £5. Now I actually thought, I think it was actually that, that's not too bad, because if I pay for a month, it's 20 quid. And actually, risk-wise, 20 quid isn't too bad, you know, I could afford it. What happens if I hate it? I could go, I've just lost 20 quid, doesn't really matter. But I also think the price is valuable, I'm not so fair about this, but when I was in regeneration, we worked with the National Youth Theatre, in fact they opened their first regional centre, amazingly, in Briley Hill. And one of the things they said, they never do a production for nothing. Because as soon as you put a price of zero on it, people don't value it. They think it's not worth anything at all. On the other hand, they don't do one that costs you 50 quid to get in, because then it's just too expensive out of people's own. And I thought that was a good lesson, and I'm kind of quite pleased that you pay for the bell ringing, because it does show you've got a commitment to it. And it does show that these lessons do have value. I also have to say that <clears throat> the bits I have learned about what's happened on the tower have been informed by the other students who are on the course I'm talking to. And what I normally do, someone asks, can you do a talk in like six months' time, I say yes, then you have to get close to things. Why did I say yes? I've actually got to do something now. And poor Claire here, Hannah, thinking about whether I was going to get come up with anything at all. PC man, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? And so on. And I kind of think, yeah, it'll be all right. I was chatting to some of the students last week and I thought it was a really good insight about how lucky I am to be to Birmingham School of Bell Ringing. One of them, Sally, was saying that when she started off, her motivation was she wanted something sociable to do, to meet new friends. She was in a choir and one of the members of the choir, Nigel, one day said, oh, I've got to leave now, I've got to go and ring the bells at this particular service. And she thought, well, that sounds interesting, so that sounds good to Nigel. And he invited her along. And her first practice, she had just two minutes. Just two minutes and a whole evening to learn how to ring up a bell and all the things you do in the first two minutes. And she said she went home that night and was thinking just about quitting. And I think that's the first challenge really. You know? What is the welcome to bell ringers when they arrive on their first occasion that they feel it's a worthwhile event? Fortunately, Nigel is also, I'm not sure whether it's true to be, certainly a helper with the Birmingham School of Bell Ring, and he did say, why don't you come along to the school and find out. So that's what Jen and I resolved to do. And last March, we turned up with St Paul. She saw the picture of it early. It is much bigger than the picture, as you'd expect. Maths teachers have got to talk about proportion and ratio and all of that. But our first session was quite informative. Tony, who is here, was our very, very first tutor. And I didn't appreciate this either. Tony's a really, really top class bell ringer. <laughs> People like were saying, you know, you're being taught by like the David Beckham of bell ringing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was. Yeah, so. <laughs> and Tony <laughs> took us up the towel. Oh, first of all, the welcome. It was meet outside, and Tony and some other students were outside to say hello. So we knew exactly where to go, we knew what time to be there. He took us up the tower, gave us a little talk with a tiny, wee little one of those uh, about what the bell ringing principles was, about how you ring from upside down, none of which I have any idea about at all. And then took us up to the bell ringing room, where for two hours, Jen and I, alternately, had support from Tony. He was pulling the sally, we were pulling the back rope, and we were trying to get it up to balance and so on. And it was fantastic. Can you imagine that? One-to-one -one tuition with the David Beckham of Bell Ringing, <laughs> learning right from first principles about how you have to get the technique right. And quite clearly, there was a long-term plan that they had about making sure that the mistakes people see down the line were avoided to start with. I have to say, we went back week by week. Every Saturday morning, we turned up and a nice cafe. We could have breakfast in, and then we'd walk across St Paul's. So it was a lovely way to start a weekend. And we'd have little bets, and it was quite interesting. I think Alison said about riding a bicycle, once you learn bicycle, and we'd have a bet each weekend how long it would take into the lesson before someone said, don't worry, it's just like learning a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Which for us was really, really good, because my wife, Jen, can't ride a bicycle. <laughs> so it's really forcing the negative. But, but she's very good, and we, we smiled about it. And yes, we went through what... The level one, the bell handling, about how to ring bell up, how to ring pasta, how to ring slow, and just started following on. And then we got our certificate and prize, which Claire cunningly came letting us. And
not only watched this bell ringing, but then gave us a written test. Can you believe that? A written test. I wasn't expecting that at all. But I did spot that the words, if you count the letter in the words, he pitted in the spaces. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> what was even better is I sneakily told my wife that as well. She said, oh, shut up, I'm doing it. So I got all marks and uh, Not that we competitive, you understand. <laughs> and we also won the, the first book, The Learning the Bell Rose, which is an excellent book to do. And I've noticed today, this is the sort of thing I do, it's one of the most expensive books over there. So it's good for the sales of the book from the bell, but it stopped me buying any other books there because I'm not quite sure what we're going to win next when we get to the next one. <laughs> Since then, we've moved on, and we moved to Tower B, which is in Handsworth. And in itself, that was quite an experience, because the, the different way to the bells was a big surprise uh, to us. So, again, it's just building, building experience. At Tower C, we moved on as a group of students, because we got to know who else we were working with. And I think that's been really helpful too, because we do encourage each other on, and we do recognise that we're at different stages, and there is differentiation, so the exercises changes to what uh, particular student is going in there, and we do get a lot of peer support. I think the student connection is, is very, very positive for us too. I might come back to that in a moment. Uh, so that took us up to about July, and the school, this is the great thing still about education, on nice summer holidays. And the school breaks up for the summer holiday and Claire and Janet Walton have got together and said, well, what are we going to do with these students who haven't got a bell tower to go to? <clears throat> so very helpfully, they said, well, Smethwick is kind of near that side of the black country. Why don't you go and join in practice on Thursday nights at Smethwick? So we turned up there uh, one evening uh, and there was Catherine, who thinks here today. Catherine, she here? Or maybe she's, she's helping out elsewhere and her husband, Rob, talk about Rob in a moment, and the Horton family, some of you might know, all ring bells, and Matthew, and the two David, so we met all of these new people, and the first session was really good, because I thought, wow, this is a bit scary, because they kept on shouting at Rob for doing things wrong, <laughs> and it was only three weeks later that I worked out, well, that shouting was actually, BOR! <laughs> that's, like, that's a true story, honestly, that's a true story. And I think, what's Rob doing wrong? Is he doing all right today? <laughs> but it was also fantastic because it put us in with a group of people run by Janet, who was one of the tutors, who, who <coughs> knew what we were doing at the school and actually incorporated little practices for Jenny and I within the actual practice night. So I think we got a double benefit from that by being arranged uh, to join the band through the school. So that's where we are. Last week we got our level two certificates. Pause for a round of applause. <laughs> and uh, after Easter, I'm told we'll be moving on to a new tower. Not quite sure if we put it. <laughs> and you shut up quickly. Yeah, I know. But what I would also like to say a few other things I've learned. First of all, is the fantastic quality of intuition we get. I mean, people have been ringing for 40 years, 50 years, you know, just absolutely fantastic and really are passionate and knowledgeable about their subject. I really do appreciate that. And also the help of Sue Turner. Uh, Simon organised a brilliant adult learners experience event on the 3rd of January where we got a chance to go and ring at St Phillips in Birmingham and St Martins and St Chad's where I rediscovered my fear of heights because it's got a glass wall. Uh, woo, what's that? I can't cope with that. But what I learned there is it was a fantastic experience, love to repeat. But actually ringing just behind other learners is quite tricky because if they go out, I go out as well. What the helpers do is they provide a fantastic framework where you can focus on your own ringing, listen to your own book, so you know, da 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 that it's you that's going wrong, because everyone else is in the right place. And every week they turn up voluntarily. And I think, guys, if you're going to give anyone a round of applause, let's give them a round of applause to help us too, because without that, it wouldn't work. <laughs> and so, we're looking to progression. And Jenny and I are thinking, well, we ought to do something back in the good old black country where we live. We, we love smell it. We've been ringing on a Sunday morning, which is a big thrill for us. Uh, what about the local bands? And you know, it's actually quite difficult. 
I was pausing for an R there, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's actually quite difficult to find which band to go for. So we've been on to Google and the website and found the Worcestershire Change Ringers Association, which lists very carefully the practice nights, the churches are ringing and so on. And actually I found all that a bit exaggerated, so when people say we get 18, you turn up, and we've done a lot of lurking recently, you lurk outside, so you wonder what they're saying, because that fear is, are they just going to be brilliant and we're going to be rubbish, or are they going to be rubbish and we'll just reinforce our bad habits that we've picked up? But you find there's four or five ringers going on, and that, that does worry me, because I haven't realised the extent to the loss of bell ringing, is that like one or two nodding heads, is that, that general? And in fact, even where they've had 12 bells, they've had 6 and then 8, but they've had 8 bells, 5 on a, on a Sunday performance, you know, I'm going to get arrested one of these nights, just sitting outside, just listening to these bells. But again, the question earlier about what do you do to welcome new people? People say, well, just turn up. There's a lot of questions going through my mind. If I do just turn up, what's that experience is going to like? Soon, we're going to take the plunge, possibly as soon as Monday, and find out what that is going to be like. But I think it is a good question to ask people. So to summarise, I think it's been a fantastic experience of Birmingham School of Bell Ringing. I think the helpers and the tutors, and I extend that to all of you, because you are all bell ringing teachers, I understand, so to you as well, you're doing something really good, encouraging people with new hobby, keeping traditions alive. And it's been life-changing for me, because amazingly, not only Birmingham School of Bell Ring has allowed me back into the education sphere, but I've started lecturing again in mathematics over at Wolverhampton College. And when Alison was talking earlier about what can we learn from the bell ringing fraternity from education, I'm finding what I'm learning is reflecting back in my teaching now. And this is a credit to all of those people who are doing the, the lessons. I mean, one is, if you don't understand something, it's really, really hard, even if it's easy for everyone else. So when I'm teaching maths, it reminds me of that, just to spend that bit longer understanding that what I think is dead easy, actually for them, is totally confusing and hard. It's taught me little steps. If you take enough little steps, you actually do move a distance. And from the initial one with Tony with the bell ringing, uh, you know, where he was pulling the sally, we were pulling the backstroke, we had to do the sally ourselves, we had to then start to do the timing with the ringing. All of those small steps has taught me teaching maths, I need to readjust what I'm teaching, but people are really challenged by it into smaller, smaller chunks to find out. And I also talk about bell ringing to describe that experience, that even if you're really stuck, Eventually, if you keep on, there's light at the end of the day, then you will improve. So thank you for your time. Thank you to the Birmingham yeah. School Ringing. School Ringing? <laughs> School Ringing. Back to the day, Uh I'm going to hand back to the now to finish off, but it's been a fantastic...
We've in, uh, increased the number of teachers that we have within the guild. I think currently we now have 11 actually accredited teachers and five accredited members. And so we, and it's good having the certificates for those as well. We like uh, to present them. And usually try to get the get the assignment to present them if possible. And we've got the wall of shame at uh, uh, sorry, the wall of fame at uh, <laughs> St Paul's where we've got everybody's uh, teaching certificates. And in the first in our first year, we had three uh, uh, three teachers actually complete their accreditation with ITTS. Uh, by teaching in our school. And I think since I put the presentation together as well, we've had two mentors. <coughs> There's not just the guild that's benefiting. We, uh, I, I actually think it's worth pointing out that, other, uh, wider, that there are wider benefits to the to ringing as a whole. And in, uh, um, we, we, as I've already said that we enroll all our students into uh, the Learning the Ropes scheme. Well, we've purchased 40 of the Learning the Ropes books from Art, and we have actually made a total of £120 worth of donations to Art. Now, what we do with our students is when they pass level one, not only do they get the book for them, but we made a donation of £5 to Art for them having passed level one. And we will make a further donation of £45 per student to art once, uh, if and when they achieve level five. And that's something we set out to do. We haven't done it yet, because we haven't got, got one through to level five yet, but we've got a level four, so <laughs> watch this space. We've bought 48 of the one below the books. <laughs> We've bought 20 copies of uh, the new Ringer's book. We've bought 10 copies of the Ramster Oaksite DVD. We've bought 10 copies of the Method Ringer's Companion. And we will buy more, and we'll be buying them in those quantities. And so far, to date, all of that is we, we have uh, spent £600 in the wider Ringer community. Back a little bit towards uh, the, the local community. We have made £1,850 worth of donations to local towers for the use of their bells. So it's not just the students that has benefited, it's that it's uh, ringing as a whole can benefit from a scheme such as this. So, yes, I do. I believe we have achieved a great deal. And I'd like to leave you with this thought. Thank you very much. Okay. Um.